So I'm Sam. Uh, I am a mature student at UE Bristol. Mm -hmm. uh, I came through the entirety of my degree system here. So I started with the undergraduate on the law course, uh, moved on to do the bar training course, and now I'm finishing off the master's element of the law course as well. Brilliant. And could you tell us a little bit about why you decided to come to university as a mature student? Yeah, so I'm originally from Bristol anyway, uh, and unlike a lot of my, my peers, um, I had a career before I came to university. So at the time I was serving in the armed forces uh, and unfortunately picked up some injuries that meant I was medically discharged. Uh, trying to decide what to do, I, I knew I wanted to come back to the southwest with my family. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to, to look at Bristol and look at the different options. Uh, and then looked at UE kind of what it could offer. So I first came here as a school trip probably about 15 to 18 years ago. Uh, and the campus is obviously a lot different. Uh, exactly. And then found out about the new law courses, new buildings, the facilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, and having kind of needs medically as well, had to look at what was going to be best suited. Mm -hmm. um, so got in contact with a few people at the university to have a bit of a chat uh, and then made that decision that this is the right place to apply to yeah. uh, and launch my application. Brilliant. And obviously you've been here quite some number of years now. Since yeah, yeah, started. four years now. Yeah. So. <laughs> can't, be, can't be too bad then. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your extracurricular activities that you've undertaken as part of your degree and, and beyond? Yeah, so coming from a kind of a social background and a, a quite a team oriented employment background, mm -hmm. um, I was really interested in getting involved with other things, other people. Yeah. So in my first year, I started a young family, so I was a bit busy, but then my second year uh, made the decision that I wanted to get more involved in law oriented activities. Mm -hmm. um, we have a law society at the university and I decided that I wanted to get more involved in that and I had some aims of what I thought we could do. Mm -hmm. um, so ran for president of the society and, and was voted in, luckily. Um, <laughs> and then for the entirety of my second year, then ran the, the law society with a team of, of colleagues. Um, with that, we kind of set out at the start of the year what we wanted to achieve and a big focus for me uh, as president was I wanted to work on equality and diversity within the legal sector. Mm -hmm. uh, so we kind of hit that really hard and it worked well that we were able to up our membership quite dramatically uh, and pick up a bigger catchment of students than we'd ever had in the past. Uh, with that, we worked a lot with the faculty to do, to do that. Yeah. Um, and that involved funding trips to London. Uh, so we took 50 students, for instance, to London uh, to meet the president of the Supreme Court, to go to Houses of Parliament. And working with the staff because of this whole um, issue on equality, yeah. we meant that we weren't we didn't have to charge any of the students anything either. Um, so no one was kind of financially constrained. Mm -hmm. uh, alongside that, we ran things like conferences. So we ran a professional uh, networking conference here uh, that involved judges from the High Court coming down to the Bristol. Uh, we had practitioners from all around the city come, uh, and that gave students an opportunity to kind of meet, network, uh, and a lot of them were able to pick up work experience from that as well. Yeah. Brilliant. So, so valuable, isn't it, for students to have that experience of seeing what it's like in practice, essentially? Yeah, and it, it's an industry where it can be quite difficult to get exposure. Um, and unless you know kind of who to speak to or where to make applications, uh, you're kind of starting at a loss straight away. So being able to network and meet people and say, this is what I want to do, how do I do it? Uh, and you've got quite high level practitioners in the city that are willing to give up time to talk to students yeah. um, through kind of networking with the university and with the law society. Mm -hmm. The university uh, and the law schools built quite a good, strong network throughout the, the kind of southwest. Yeah. Um, so if you have a certain question or an area that you're looking at to, to practice in, mm -hmm. someone somewhere will generally have a contact. Yeah. Um, and whether that means you've got a bit of work experience or, or speak with someone via email. Mm -hmm. um, and you can ask kind of all those questions you need to start really honing your career at an early stage. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you've done all this alongside, as you said, having a young family. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you've obviously... Um, manage to balance things and um, and work, maintain that kind of that level of commitment to your studies. Any tips on how to do that? <laughs> uh, I, I think it's you've got to be open from the start. Um, before I arrived on campus, I got in contact with my program leaders and said, look, I, I have certain learning needs now um, because of disability, because of injury. And how am I going to best ma manage that? So the university stepped in at a very early stage mm -hmm. uh, with disability support. Uh, and straight away, they were able to coach me on uh, kind of preparing for university adaptations that may be needed to be put in place uh, and then I was able to work with uh, lecturers at a very early stage saying this is the technology I need to use to learn now uh, and this is how it works and it was very much a two-way process that the staff were very engaged with me yeah. um, kind of from the family basis it, it was difficult my, my daughter was born in our first year within a couple of months of starting the course um, but I said to my tutors from the start that my wife's expecting a child and mm -hmm. and this is kind of what's happening 
And again, they couldn't have been more supportive. And that would be making sure that you know, I took a couple of weeks off that work was getting sent to me, mm -hmm. um, opportunities to kind of meet lecturers and kind of get some feedback and some one-to-one -one help if needed. Mm -hmm. And then additionally, because of coming in at a mature level, um, I hadn't been in school for 15 years. So I was able to use things like academic support in the in the faculty mm -hmm. and have some kind of one-to-one -one work on how to structure legal uh, coursework, how to mm -hmm. structure kind of university academic work mm -hmm. uh, and really start to improve my skills to actually get me up to the calibre and, and the level needed. So it sounds like you've been relatively well supported at UAE. Yeah, I couldn't really have asked for anything more. Um, mm -hmm. It was very much... If you need something, ask for it. Mm -hmm. And if the person can't help you, they'll find someone that will. Oh, that's lovely. That's really nice to hear. <laughs> um, and I suppose a, a, just a contextual question. Have you found university more or less difficult than you thought it would be? I don't think I knew what to expect, okay. if I'm honest with you. Um, <laughs> my friends all went to university at 18, whereas I started at, at 27. Mm. So it was very different. Um, I think the hardest bit was coming from a, a working background and a very physical working background, so an academic study. Um, and obviously doing law is a very heavy academic study. Yeah. Um, but the adaptation was, was doable, again, as long as I sought the support that I needed. Yeah. Um, throughout the course, I think they they manage the course very well, that it does get harder, mm -hmm. but it gets harder in the right stages. Yeah. Uh, and effectively, as a cohort, you're only moving on when you're ready to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so overall... I'd say it was manageable, but a shock to the system to begin with. <laughs> I suppose it, I suppose it is to, to everyone at different stages. And if you're coming in at 18, that's a different thing again. Yeah. Um, and a different sort of culture shock. But maybe they just have a bit more partying along the side. Yeah. And I, I think for the younger generations and, and the, the kind of 18-year-old students, it's moving on in education. Mm -hmm. And for them, it's the kind of lifestyle change of, of being more independent. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, it was, um, I've been independent. Now I need to move back to education. Yeah. And then, so reflecting on the four years that you've had here and then looking forward yeah. how are you hoping to move forward what are the next steps for you so I'm really fortunate that uh throughout my bar course I've actually done a lot of volunteering work legally for the Royal British Legion okay. um as an ex-serviceman myself I've got a lot of contacts within the Legion uh they've helped my family and, and vice versa so I'm actually carrying on working for them full time mm -hmm. um and doing a lot of legal work in-house for them uh with the long-term aim of, of securing pupillage mm -hmm. uh and hopefully finishing off my final bits of training and becoming a full-time barrister. That's fantastic. And do would you class yourself as successful? Uh I think you could weight it as personally, I think I've just done the best that I could. Mm -hmm. Um I think when you look at it from a, an outside point of view. When people told me when I left the forces that you can't go to university because you're not the right caliber of person mm -hmm. um, and you're not the normal student, mm -hmm. um, I kind of defied that and said, no, I am going to do it. So I think the the success I've had, is, again, has come from the support that I've been given. Mm -hmm. um, in my third year, I was really lucky to be nominated and, and win Bristol Law Society Student of the Year. Um, and that was a really stiff competition against all the other major law schools in the area. Um, but I don't think without the support and drive from my lecturers mm -hmm. that I would have being successful myself yeah I mean from an external perspective looking at yourself and looking at the journey you've been on with a young family and coming from a less traditional background I would 100% say that you're sort of like the model of success no, like coming at things um with drive and ambition um and yeah I'm delighted that you have come and spoken to us today no, it's been a pleasure no <laughs> so thank you for taking no, the welcome. time to do that